We need to talk about Tommy LaStella. As you've likely heard by now, the Seattle Mariners signed Tommy LaStella to a one-year deal. He's only going to be getting paid the league minimum as he was designated for assignment by the San Francisco Giants and released by them. Therefore, they're taking on all of his salary. The Mariners just have to give him a couple bucks. But like everything in baseball, like every trade, like every signing, like every move that you make, there are pros and then there are cons. And this move, more than most moves in my opinion that the Mariners have made, has some very negative connotations depending on what it means for the team. We're going to make two videos. We're going to make a good and a bad video for this signing of Tommy LaStella. What is the good thing that you could take away from this Tommy LaStella signing? And then what are the bad things that you could take away from this Tommy LaStella signing? Let's hop into it. I'm usually one to take a look at the bad news first. So this is gonna be the bad. The past couple years, Tommy LaStella has been bad. His two years in San Francisco, LaStella posted just an 86 OPS plus. He hit 245, 297, 380. That's pretty bad. Thanks, Captain Obvious. And the rumors have been that the Mariners have been looking for one more bat. They've been in pursuit of one more bat to add to this lineup, this roster, one that will hopefully lengthen their lineup and make them more of a contender for the American League West. Well, what I'm worried about, and I'm sure what you're worried about too, was Tommy LaStella the bat? Was Tommy LaStella the guy that Jerry Depoto and Justin Hollander have been pursuing? Is Tommy LaStella the answer? DePoto has talked specifically about wanting to be able to give Ty France a day off at first base, maybe Gino a day off at third. Well, Tommy LaStella can do that for you, just not very well. LaStella is listed as a second baseman at pinch hitter and a third baseman, but he can play first in a pinch if you need him to, meaning that he could be the guy to give some days off to Ty France and a Eugenio Suarez over there at third base. But the problem is, he's not very good. Why are you bullying me? And if this is that one final piece that DePoto and Hollander have been talking about, then this is just another disappointing ad in a what has been basically a disappointing offseason. As Mariners fans coming off of the 2022 season, we were all excited, man. We were all excited to think that, hey, this team is going to add and get them back to the playoffs again next year in 2023. And don't get me wrong, they've added. To Oscar Hernandez, a full season of Luis Castillo, adding Colton Wong, those are no small additions. And take it how you will. Do you think the team's better or do you think these were just lateral moves? We won't know until this season starts. Adding AJ Pollock was a good move for the Mariners and it made it look like the only thing they really needed to do for the rest of the offseason was get a bench bat, someone that could take over time at ADH and also give some time to Ty France and a Eugenio Suarez. That was the main thing. Have a rotation between those three players, a Eugenio Suarez, Ty France, and then whoever's going to DH along with AJ Pollock DHing sometimes. And at that point, you have a pretty solid team. I mean, the DH is the one spot on the roster where you look at it and you're like i don't know who's gonna play there and for the mariners is that guy gonna be tommy la stella for them because if it is that's not very good and for the mariners this could have some negative connotations about other players on the roster as well for the mariners both of their utility guys sam haggerty and dylan moore were both banged up at the end of the season and required extended time off in surgery Dylan Moore had to have a core surgery that was going to keep him out six to eight weeks. They said that he was going to be good to go for spring training, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe the signing of somebody like Tommy LaStella that could play multiple positions is a precursor of what's to come with someone like Dylan Moore and the fact that maybe he can't play. Maybe he's not going to be ready to go and they need someone like Tommy LaStella or Colin Moran for that matter that they did sign. They need these guys to fill in for Dylan Moore or Sam Haggerty, who of course had his issues at the end of the last season as well that kept him out of the postseason. Dylan Moore's core surgery, as well as the injury to Sam Haggerty's groin, is something that honestly at this point is kind of worrying me because we haven't heard much about it since we knew that they were hurt. Obviously, Dylan Moore's injury was something that kind of came out of the blue that nobody expected. Hags, we saw it happen at the end of last season, but we haven't heard much about him since then. Hey, have you bought a Mariner Mojo hat yet? get one and relying on somebody like tommy la stella to be that guy for you that's going to take over the spots that haggerty and more are currently out of i don't know if that's a great idea and honestly tommy la stella while he's not a big signing he is obviously no big move i said he was a big move the other day as a joke that's why there were quotation marks around the word big he can provide a little bit for this team if he's just a bench bat but if he is being signed as the guy that's going to rotate through first and third and end up being a DH for you, as well as having to take time for Dylan Moore or Sam Haggerty, Tommy LaStella is probably not the guy you're looking for, and neither is Colin Moran. Signing LaStella to a major league deal just seems crazy to me, and I've heard the guys over at Locked On call this a glorified NRI, a glorified non-roster invite to spring training, and I mean, I agree with that, and I think they're kind of in the same boat that we are, that if this is the move the Mariners are making, to finish off the offseason, to cap off this offseason, that is probably the biggest disappointment of the offseason, even bigger than not re-signing Mitch Hanniger or getting one of the shortstops or so on and so forth. All the other weird things we've had this offseason that have really thrown us for a loop, 
This might be the most disappointing part of all of it. Listella did hit 245 last year versus right-handed pitching, but he was also hurt a lot last year as well. So what can you really expect out of the 33-year-old who could play a couple different positions and be okay there? as well as someone who's on the downward side of their career in terms of their number. At least that's what it's looked like recently. So if that is the case with Tommy LaStella, this is an L. This is a massive L taken by the Mariners. But if that's not the case, this is pretty good. And I have that video on the screen now. We'll be doing that video tomorrow. I appreciate you guys watching this one and go Mariners.